to esteemed panelists and members of the Immaculate Conception School of Malala Senior High School community, my name is Lester and my group mates are Gareel, Isabel, Kenneth, Roderick, and Andre. We are from Grade 12 St. John Paul's Second Group B and we are here to present our study, I Am Ready Typhoon Probability Assessment of Barangay Pio Cross-Cosa, Alumpit, Bulacan. To introduce the research topic, typhoon disasters bring great threat and danger to residents that may be affected by it, especially in the Philippines, a country frequently experiencing such disasters. With this current problem, the present study assessed the vulnerability of Barangay Pirocos Casa to typhoons. Vulnerability assessment is based on three vulnerability types, physical, social, and motivational vulnerability. The results from the vulnerability assessment is for a revision of a new action plan. As typhoons will not cease to exist in the future, people must lessen their vulnerability to typhoons and prevent major damages. Moving on, our statement of the problem indicates that the main purpose of this study is vulnerability assessment to typhoons of the research locals' households. The created or revised action plan is to be disseminated through a seminar. The study aims to answer the following questions. First, how physically, socially, and motivationally vulnerable is Barangay P. Cross-Cosa? Second, how does the community respond to typhoons? Third, how do local officials facilitate when there are typhoons? Lastly, what can be the solutions to the research locals' physical, social, and motivational vulnerability? Moving on to the scope and the limitations of the study set by the researchers are the following. First is physical vulnerability, which refers to the infrastructures. Second is social vulnerability, which refers to the cooperation of residents and local government during typhoons. And lastly, motivational vulnerability, which refers to the people's reaction to typhoons. References only came from news articles, research papers, and documents issued by the local government only. In addition to that, the study only covered Barangay Pio Cruz wherein the participants will be its residents from ages 12 to 16 years old. The data gathering utilized a survey questionnaire and was conducted last May 2021. For the significance of the study, the findings and proposal of this paper will be beneficial to the following. Residents of the research local, as they are the ones who will directly benefit when their action plan is revised. Vulnerable communities, as neighboring barangays can also benefit from Pio Cruz vulnerability assessment. Local government, as the study will help cover gaps in the risk reduction plans, disaster risk reduction, and management officers as they come up with strategies and solutions regarding typhoon risk reduction. And lastly, future researches. The research paradigm was an IPO model wherein the input were the three types of vulnerability and its factors. The process was vulnerability assessment and the output as the proposed action plan. The assumptions of the study are the research local is susceptible to physical, social, and motivational vulnerability, the community can respond well to typhoons, the local officials can facilitate properly when a typhoon occurs, and the potential solutions are feasible to typhoon mitigation. Following terms are defined and will be used for the study. Awareness, the resident's perception, capacity, the ability of people to have resources needed. Mitigation, the actions done to lessen casualties. Preparedness, the actions done before a typhoon occurs. Recovery, the time spent to return to a normal state. Rehabilitation, the actions done to, uh, to repair damage caused by typhoons. Response, the actions done by officials to keep everyone safe during typhoons. Typhoon refers to past occurrences of typhoon disasters which are recorded. And lastly, vulnerability which is classified into physical, social, and motivational. We then proceed to the second chapter and starting off with the review of related literature. According to CADCA, typhoons are tropical cyclones that occur in the Northwest Pacific Ocean. Hurricanes are those that occur in the North Atlantic and Northeast Pacific, while cyclones are those that occur in the South Pacific and the Indian Ocean. In the Philippines, according to Bagasa, typhoons are intense areas of low atmospheric pressure and are considered to be the most destructive as they can cause strong winds, heavy rains, and flooding, which can lead to loss of life and property destruction. In 2011 to 2020, 12,960 people died and 111 billion pesos in Agricultural and infrastructural losses occurred. When Typhoon Pedrin hit Central Luzon in 2011, Dizon said that a total of 26,000 families in 22 barangays were affected in Calumpit. The mayor responded by ordering all private and public buildings to open and accommodate residents seeking higher ground. But there are those who chose to stay at their homes. He also asked that the Department of Local and Interior Government to ask for help and urge the public to donate relief goods to affected families. To start with a review of related studies for the first part of Physical vulnerability. The Social Weather Station study in 2013 it interviewed people about the impact of Typhoon Yolanda on households across the country. The results showed that the majority of the respondents were gravely damaged and had their homes destroyed. Moving on, the NRD et al. study in 2016 assessed disability among Typhoon Yolanda survivors. Its results are that the elderly, unemployed, those who have several health conditions, and the poor are more likely to have severe disabilities. Those who live in rural areas and have tools and materials to repair their homes are less likely to dis be disabled. In line with this, Stephenson and Lyson and Morrell study in 2018 demonstrated a method for identifying risks in the rural communities of the Philippines. They have found out that visual outputs are most effective to make locals understand the vulnerabilities in their area. 
Next, we will discuss the review of related studies for the second variable, social vulnerability. Starting off, Ignacio et al. study in 2015 mapped social vulnerable populations such as the poor, the elderly, the young, etc., and those who live in close and low sloped areas. The map showed that those with high social vulnerability and live in coasts and low slopes have the most cases of affected and dead people during typhoons. Next, CNPR in 2015 used a census-based social vulnerability index by grouping the vulnerable population by city, barangay, and household to assess social vulnerability. The results were completed using principal component analysis and was consistent with the previous study of CORE in 2011, where a barangay was most socially vulnerable and also experienced the most casualties. Next, Toda et al. in 2016 computed the local social vulnerability by social vulnerability indicators such as poverty, age, ethnicity, etc. and constructed the social vulnerability index. The result is that a barangay was consistently highest in all factors of vulnerability and this barangay was the hardest hit during Typhoon Yolanda with the most number of reported casualties. Lastly, Kuya Antonio and Antonio in 2017 discussed the effectiveness of a barangay disaster risk reduction management committees to barangays by creating checklists that correlates with four thematic areas of disaster preparedness. The barangay who checked the most has been proven to experience less casualties when it comes to typhoon disaster. For the review of related studies of the late of the last variable, which is motivational vulnerability, Zhang et al. study used a questionnaire about the citizens' concerns and sources of information about disaster prevention. The results showed that their main concern was property damage with life and health having a lower level of concern. The most common sources are television, social media, and news from relatives and friends. For vulnerability assessment, Rana and Ray in 2018 used five types of vulnerabilities such as social, physical, economic, attitudinal, and institu institutional in order to create a model for vulnerability assessment in their respective research local. The research showed that their, the research local shows susceptibility to all types of vulnerability. We then proceed to the third chapter, and for the first part, the research design. Descriptive mixed method approach was utilized by the study for the vulnerability assessment of Barangay Biocoscosa. The researchers looked into the three types of vulnerability that affected the barangay susceptibility to, to typhoons, as well as how the residents and officials handled the situation in cases of typhoon disasters. For the, for the participants of the study, the target population was the residents of the barangay. The residents' houses are distributed in seven different purocs and four subdivisions within the barangay. Convenient sampling was used as a given time frame for data gathering was two weeks only. The researchers then choose respondents based on who was available at that time. The survey co questionnaire was distributed in 20 residents and 10 barangay officials respectively. For the description of the respondents, two parameters were used when choosing participants. Their age, wherein they must be between 12 to 60 years old, as this is the age where people have enough recognition and memory of what was going on in their surroundings and their years of residency in the barangay, wherein they must have lived there for five consecutive years, including the present year 2021. This is because the study needed experience with typhoons and five years is ample time for them to, act, to gather so. The type of questions on the survey was about the respondents' physical, social, and motivational vulnerability. There was an additional questionnaire regarding their typhoon preparations. Moving on, the research instrument used a modified standard Likert scheme to create their own four-point vulnerability scale to measure the level of typhoon vulnerability. The study used a survey questionnaire wherein the first section was a survey with 30 close-ended questions, 10 for each type of vulnerability. They were rated from strongly agree to strongly disagree. Second section was a questionnaire divided into two parts as there were different set of questions for the residents and for the barangay officials. There were four open-ended questions. On. The data gathering was done on May 17, 2021 to Google Forms wherein it automatically closed on May 31, 2021. The survey questionnaire was developed by the researchers on their own without any reference. It was distributed by sending links through social messaging sites and emails. There was no retrieval percentage as the survey questionnaire was closed the moment the target number of respondents was reached. Data analysis varies based on the questions on the statement of the problem. For the first question, both mean and percentage was used. Percentage show how many respondents agree or disagree with the statement. Then the mean showed the average of who agreed or disagreed, which was used to determine their vulnerability. The mean of each question was interpreted based on the device vulnerability scale. A mean of 2.5 below meant that they are susceptible to vulnerability, while a mean of 2.5 above, above meant that they are not. After this, an overall vulnerability mean for the barangay was computed with the same basis in interpretation. Lastly, for questions 2 to 4 in the statement of the problem, the data was analyzed in stages. First, the patterns that emerged were noted after the data was sorted. The responses were then evaluated to what were consistent and what were distinct. The findings were compared to the, com to the document update from the local barangay hall such as the BDRMC plan located in the appendix. We then proceed to the fourth chapter where in the following would make up the first problem in the statement of the problem. The first section of the survey was 10 questions for the physical vulnerability. The mean of each question can be seen at the table. 
and the overall physical vulnerability mean was 3.026, giving an interpretation that the barangay is not particularly physically vulnerable to typhoon disasters. It was inferred that the majority of the citizens do not evacuate as evacuation centers are too far and cannot accommodate everyone. Thus, they prefer to stay home as it is safer. This validates Deason's report in 2011, found in the review or rel of related literature. Furthermore, a majority of residents' houses were strong with an elevated area and placed on higher grounds. That is why earlier typhoons did not destroy any residences as it is made out of concrete, according to the BDRMC plan. Additionally, several residents agree that their houses are free from infrastructure that may fall, have functional canal systems, have clean surroundings, and are near essential facilities and near main roads, which is in accordance with the BDRMC. As the volume has supported these results, as this showed that the respondents res preferred to stay at home. However, these results contradicted those of Leonardi et al. as houses made out of light materials are not significantly a hazard. Proceeding to the results and discussion for social vulnerability, the mean of each question can be seen at the table presented. And the overall social vulnerability mean was 2.964, giving an interpretation that the barangay is not particularly social vulnerable to typhoon disaster. According to Ignacio et al., in 2015, one social vulnerability indicator is income. The results are then supported by this study as a high income would make an individual less vulnerable. Income is a factor of questions 11, 12, 14, and 18 in the survey. For an individual to agree with any of these questions, they must have at least a significant amount of income. C and 4 in 2015 included age and having stability as a factor of social vulnerability. This comprises questions 15 and 16 in the survey. Thus, the said study supports the results as those who need assistance would need it and taking action against the team, thus making them more vulnerable. Lastly, according to Toda et al. in 2015, having people that need assistance would affect one's, affect one's adaptive capacity, which is the most dominant factor of social vulnerability according to them. Having skills that make a person adapt easily would make them less socially vulnerable as they can make solutions to alleviate the situation. Proceeding to the results and discussion for motivational vulnerability, the mean of each question can be seen at the table presented, and the overall motivational vulnerability mean was 3.445, giving an interpretation that the barangay is not particularly motivationally vulnerable to typhoon disasters. It can be inferred from the results that the res residents of the barangay have a positive mindset, are confident in their preparations, and do not underestimate the typhoon. This contradicts the result of the SWS in 2013 where people underestimated the typhoon and instead stayed at their homes rather than seeking higher ground. Furthermore, people are attentive to the updates of the typhoon through radio and television, validating Zhang et al.'s conclusion in 2017 that television is a common source of information and updates. Additionally, SWS-stated radios are also used by residents and thus making them well-informed to have the confidence to prepare and lessen risk. Lastly, the overall vulnerability for Barangay Priyakoskosa was 3.145, indicating that the barangay is not particularly vulnerable to typhoons. A paper by Rana Retrain 2018 also used vulnerability assessment. However, they had a sample of 210 households. Using households as, well as respondents would have been given variety of the results as there is a possibility that there are two responses from the same household, thus giving identical answers. This may or may have not generalized the result of the overall vulnerability, which means that the result may or may have not been accurate due to the number of responses. For the second problem in the statement of the problem, we then proceed to the first three open-ended questions in the survey, answered by the residents of the barangay. The first question asks, what residents prepare before a typhoon? The results show that all respondents prioritize having enough necessities that may help them survive, such as food, water, medicine, and communication. Some even relocated their cars to higher ground, prepared large drums for collection of rainwater, and prepared an evacuation plan. The responses to this correspond with the findings of SWS, as both participants prioritize having necessities and being updated with the typhoon. They are also similar in relocating to a safer location. Moreover, these results correspond to the survey questions 22, 23, and 24, as it shows that the residents are self-assured, independent, and have the initiative. Next, the second question asks if the residents evacuate or not, and the reason behind their answer. A majority do not evacuate, as they would rather safeguard their homes, as it is safer than evacuation centers. They will only leave if the floodwaters reach inside of their homes. Respondents coincide with the data found in the BDRMC plan. It is stated that there Evacuation centers of the barangay cannot accommodate all of the residents. It is also stated that only half of those who live in low-lying areas can go to the evacuation centers while others opt to stay at their own homes or to their relatives. This coincides with the SWS study in 2013 wherein respondents prefer to stay at home. For the last question, it asks where the respondents get funds to cover typhoon-related expenses. The majority said that it comes from their own savings. Well, there are some that receive financial assistance from relatives in government programs. The responses to this question validate survey questions 11 and 12. Thus, the respondents can make decisions for their families and can manage finances, opting to use their savings instead of asking for loans. Additionally, their financial assistance program in the Barangay Pio Cascosa 
fund necessary activities. This is then supported by the SWS study in 2013 that there exists a financial assistance program for the government and relatives. For the third problem in the SOP, we then proceed to the second set of three open-ended questions in the survey, this time answered by the barangay officials. The first question asks if there exists an organization such as a BDRRMC. If yes, they will be asked if regular meetings are conducted and if not, they will be asked why it does not exist. All of the respondents answered that it exists. Some even part, some are even part of the BDRRMC themselves. They said that they hold regular meetings and that there is a role for every officer. According to the Philippine Disaster Dutch Reduction Management Act or RA 10121, BDRRMCs must exist in every province, city, municipal, municipality, and barangay. Thus, the results of question one are in accordance with RA 10121. Additionally, Kuya Antonio and Antonio used in 2017 that the presence of a BDRMC is needed for effective disaster preparedness. Next, the second question asks if there are trainings and seminars regarding typhoon preparedness, which has a follow-up question about what have been their insights and experiences if they do, do have such seminars. If they don't, they'd be asked why they don't hold them. All of them answered that they, there are training and seminars. Some said that it is important to avoid getting hurt and injured. Be that as it may, there was one correspondent that despite having seminars, the community undermines the ideas. The response is supported by Barangay Pio Cruz Cos's BDRMC plan as there is an inventory of seminars and training that had been conducted to the community. Specifically, they had their orientation on RA1121. According to Kuya Antonio Antonio, training and seminars are under disaster awareness, where it is important to do so as they achieve the goals of disaster risk reduction management. Third question asks if the barangay has the necessary tools and equipment needed for typhoon preparedness. And if they answered yes, they'd be asked if it is being regularly maintained. If not, they'd be asked why they do not have them. All of them said that they have the complete and necessary tools, one saying that the mayor would give them support should they need them. They also said that they have seminars on how to use each equipment. The results are in accordance with the BDRMC plan as there is a list of tools that a barangay should have for typhoon preparedness. 13 out of 14 were marked, meaning the barangay had them. Kuya Antonio and Antonio said that equipping necessary tools is one of the keys to be effective in disaster management, meaning that the barangay would always be prepared for any calamities should they arise. The last problem mentioned in the SOP, the fourth open-ended questions are for both the residents and barangay officials regarding possible solutions to address the barangay's vulnerabilities. The question is about what may be feasible solutions that can be enacted to adjust the barangay's physical, social, and motiv motivational vulnerabilities. The results show the residents' awareness of the clogging of drainage systems, and they propose to have a proper waste disposal system. One adjusts the issue of the dredging of the, near of the nearest river in the community, which became shallow due to Mount Pinatubo's eruption in 1991. An information drive, orientation, and seminar were mostly suggested so that the community can gain knowledge regarding the risk and effects of the typhoon. Moreover, suggestions for cleaning and tree planting were made to reduce the effects of the typhoon. An early evacuation plan is also recommended and volunteering in typhoon shelters was suggested. Social media and news are good ways to raise awareness said by the respondents, encouraging the youth to stay calm and positive. According to Stephenson, Finlayson, and Morrill's study in 2018, visual outputs are most effective for locals to understand and be aware of issues such as typhoon preparedness. The suggestions proposed by both the respondents and officials should be taken into consideration. We then proceed to the conclusions that the researchers have come up with. For problem one, the researchers found that Barangay Pio Cruz Goza Calumpit Bulacan is not particularly vulnerable to typhoon disasters because the overall mean of the barangay is 3.145. Therefore, assumption one is accepted. For problem two, the residents of the barangay prioritize, prioritize food supply and portable water by monitoring updates through the radio or television. Most of them will not evacuate from their homes but will comply if they are advised to evacuate. Some will receive financial assistance from relatives and government programs. Therefore, assumption 2 is accepted. For problem 3, the researchers found that the barangay officials can, can aid when a typhoon occurs in the area. The government must focus on prevention and mitigation programs, they said. They also suggested that the government should provide more money for disaster preparedness. Therefore, assumption 3 is accepted. And lastly, for problem 4, the findings show that the greatest need for regular information, action flow, and an easier time preparing and taking adequate preparations for upcoming typhoons was co cooperation with communities and the barangay officials. Therefore, assumption 4 is accepted. Lastly, we move on to the recommendations of the study. First, for the time and money. Future researchers must consider how much time and money they are willing to spend in order to produce a more in-depth result. Second, for the research paradigm, future studies can use for the criteria model or P model to investigate the relationship between two or more variables or propose a feasible program or intervention measure, respectively. Third, for the research variables, future studies can include economic vulnerability as a variable. It is also one of the four major types of vulnerability wherein it can affect the country's economy and people's lives. Fourth, for the research design, future researchers can use action research design, causal design, or longitudinal design to find solutions, investigate, and determine the positive 
So far, it is happening for study, the research local over a long period of time, respectively. If, for the research participants, future researchers can opt into gathering 360 participants if they wish to have 95% level of confidence and 5% margin of error when conducting a quantitative study. Six, for the research local, future studies can focus on free of neighboring barangays such as Herro, Bayan, Kalumpak and San Marcos are concentrated in Kalumpits, neighboring towns such as Malolos, Palumbong, and Pumila, which are all prone to flood. 7. For type of sampling, future research should opt to use a random sampling to ensure that the data has normal distribution. 8. For the research instrument, interview and observation should be used to obtain a more in-depth explanation from study participants and the current situation of the local. Lastly, 9. For other topics, waste management and discipline are the topics that the researchers suggest to focus on to reduce typhoon-related problems in the future. That ends our video presentation on our research capstone. Thank you for listening, esteemed panelists and staff, and we look forward to seeing you once again. Thank you very much and God bless us all.